the question was about the social context. No, okay, let's go back. And social. <laughs> so, so in the states, in the United States, in the '60s, we had the end '50s, '50s and '60s, early '70s, we had a thing called the Civil Rights Movement. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, uh, Mega Evers, um, Stokely Carmichael, now Kwame Ture, um, and others. Uh, Black Panther Party, Weathermen, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this movement for freedom always existed within the United States. In the United States, we have a huge abolitionist movement, people who are against slavery. And most of them are white people, to be honest with you. Uh, in the United States. Most of the people who are against slavery in the United States are white people. You would think <laughs> you would think that black people would be the ones at the forefront of the abolitionist movement. And, and we are. I mean, I could quote Frederick Douglass, I can go to Nat Turner, I could talk about uh, Harriet Tubman and, and others. But when you look at the historical change, we, we can fight. We fight, we riot, we protest. But when it comes to the courts, the laws, the mood of society, religion, white people, white Americans have been at the forefront, have been the leaders of black freedom. Now black people don't want to say that. I don't know why, but it's the truth. The truth is, Barack Obama was not elected by black people. Even if all the black people in America voted for Barack Obama, he still wouldn't win because we're that small of a group in the United States. Latinos, whites, they said, we want him, black man in office. Now, of course, we black people in America, we, we appreciate it. We're like, yes, finally we have a black president, blah, 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 blah. And I can go into that too on another level. But just the sheer excitement of it. Okay, just keep it light, keep it on the surface. To understand the movement for real, the real freedom movement, it has no color on it. And if it did have a color on it, it would be revolutionary white people that would be at the front of it. Now, of course there's people like me in the United States. Black men that are fighting for freedom every day. Every day, we never let up. Ever. It is in my blood. I will always stand for the cause of black liberation. No doubt. But I stand for truth also. I stand for humanity first. The deepest part to being black is being African. The deepest part to being African is being human. The deepest part to being human is being God. The deepest part of being God is being love, being intelligence, and all of the above, understanding, mercy, uh, all that. It's God-like. What would you rather be, black or God? <laughs> Who are you really, African-American or human? I tend to lean toward human myself. And so, hip hop as a movement is colored with this as well. Not all of hip hop agrees with KRS-One, and they shouldn't. Hip hop should be challenging everything that anybody is saying out there about. Truth will hold up, and that's all I speak is truth. So I invite all questions. But let's get it clear that all of hip hop doesn't agree with this. But like I just explained to the lady here, I'm one of the leaders of the culture. I'm not, and I don't say that like I'm above anybody. That's a job, that's a, that's a burden, that's a responsibility. That's not something you say and then all of a sudden somebody puts flowers on you. No, that's a hard position to be. To say, wait a minute, I'm trying to birth and lead my culture. So go back now to the 70s. Malcolm X is assassinated, Dr. King is assassinated, John F. Kennedy's assassinated, Mega Ev is assassinated, and, and Black Panther Party members is assassinated. And then all the other little ones that didn't get the name recognition, assassinated. I grew up in that. 
hip hop grew up in that. There's two types of people in the world. Black men and black boys. Black boys is who you see on mainstream television. I want the girl, uh, the big house, uh, I'm driving the car. That's little boy stuff. And any man will let you know, any man knows that. Any adult knows that. Now I'm not saying that when you're on TV you can't aspire for the good things in life, no doubt. But a man, a real man, he gets on the TV and first he looks for his kids. <laughs> Let me make sure my kids ate today. Are they clean today? Did they learn something today? Uh, are they protected today? Before I can even talk to you, is my kids good? It's a man. Is my woman good? Is she, feel, is she empowered? Does she feel like she can breathe? Is she expressing herself? Does she feel loved? What's my woman doing? Most of the rappers you see on TV, they have no woman in their life. They have little girls who are only interested in little boys. So they play little girl, little boy games. Mm -hmm. I want the guy with the car. <laughs> That's a little girl, a little boy. I can't argue with that. Leave all that over there, okay? There's a little girl, little boy arena that rappers play into. But the majority of us, are men and women, the majority of us. So the movement starts with black men. Hip hop begins with black men in particular. In particular, not black boys, not white boys, not Asian boys. Men, black men, talking to white men who are talking to Asian men who are talking to Latino men. We all come together and we say, like my man, um, oh man, I can run down, like in graffiti, you got Takey 183, one of the most famous graffiti writers in hip hop. He's Greek. You got Quick and, and Scene, who I think is Italian, Scene. Rest, rest in peace, he passed. But Scene is one of the, one of the he's, a, he's a legend in graffiti writing. It's a white kid. Cat, big cat. We used to run around crossing everybody out. White kid. They not hip hop? Of course they hip hop. But also, they recognize that this ain't about color. This ain't about race. Even white kids that live in, in the neighborhoods in the Bronx, they know that they're, they're, they're just as oppressed as we are. And they feel it every day. These are men, okay? Men, white men, who are getting hit over the head by the cop called nigger lover, or you just want to be a nigger lover, by other white men. You're walking down the street with your black girlfriend, and you got blacks and whites dissing you, because whatever. No, that's a man, standing for his principles. I give a fuck what y'all think about me and my wife. I'm a man. Step over here, I'll give you two in your head. That's what I'm talking about. Now, that's where hip-hop comes from. That. And that's what we're missing. Because now everyone regards hip hop as mainstream and MTV and that's little boy stuff. Even the executives that work at MTV are little boys and little girls, all of them. Because there's no way a man is gonna program what's being put on MTV. No way. You cannot say you are a man and then program MTV to be what that bullshit is. You don't think that uh, that is selfish, man? No. No. The selfish reduces you to a boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the minute selfish, boy. Uh, angry, boy. Uh, racist, boy. Sexist, boy. All that just anything you put in front take you down to boy. <laughs> now you may start out as a man, but the minute you open your mouth, we're gonna see if you really a man or not. We're gonna see. And what's happening is rap music through mainstream media is turning all boys into boys. They're not raising them as men. They're not raising us up as men. And this is the movement of hip hop, maturity. This is it, this is the, at least the first part of it was maturity. 
I'm not that kind of man. I'm this kind of man. And now we're going to stand on it. What is it? It's Malcolm X. Oh, word. What is it? It's the Black Panther Party. Oh, word. You go to any prison in the United States right now. Go to any prison in the United States. If they know, if the, if, if the prisoners that are there, if the people, the inmates that are there, if they know that you stood for revolution, you have no problems in prison. If they saw you on the TV, and they in prison, and they saw you on the TV go, gangster, gangster, I got the guns out, we on the corner selling crap. The minute you get in prison, you're finished. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Oh, you a gangster? Come on in here now. Come on in here with some real gangsters. And let's show you what gangster is. Because those, the people, most of the inmates in prison started out as boys, went to prison and became men. Then they're in prison, they realize, damn, I shouldn't have killed that person. I shouldn't have robbed that person. But now you're in prison. So now you realize yourself, but you're in prison. So now you get aggravated with other people who are talking about robbing and shooting and killing and selling drugs. You're like, yo, all you're going to do is wind up right here. So if you dumb enough to be out there talking like that, the minute you come in here, dude, we waiting for you. I'm, I'm waiting for you. But now you let somebody like Chuck D or, or Immortal Technique or Dead Press or let any of them go to jail for any reason. They'll have dudes washing their underwear out for them and be like, yo, dog, yo, what you stand for, we protecting you on that right now. You let Cypress Hill be real. Let him go to prison and see the Mexicans come around him like a general. Ain't nobody touching be real right here. Can I say it in their language? But this is manhood. Manhood! Yes. Right after manhood, here comes womanhood. And it's not right after, it's really first, and I'm going to show you why. Hip-hop politically begins with men. It begins with black men. It really does. It, it begins with black with the attitude of black men. The Latino man was with that too, and then the white man was with that too. But Cool Herc, the father of our culture, the reason he went outside to play his music at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, actually inside the, in the community center, the reason he went was because of his sister. His sister, Cindy. Cindy Campbell. Cindy, his older sister, was the one who said, Yo, Hurt, go, as she said, um, he's a right, he's a graffiti writer, right? Cool ass Clyde. And it was his bigger sister that said, Could you DJ for my, my birthday party? And he left the, the walls and became a DJ and started playing, uh, you know, James Brown and uh, Apache and uh, all these classic records now. But let me go from him to her. Women, women, not little girls, women, real women, is the purpose of hip hop, is the glue of hip hop. It's the glue of it. Men are the outward appearance of hip hop, black men. Behind them is all kinds of women. Start with Cindy, with Cool Her, and Pebbly Poo, first female MC, who was with Cool Her. Take it all the way over to Sha Rock, who was with Funky 4 Plus One More. Take it over to Roxanne Shantae, who had many battles, and won, by the way. Take it over to Salt and Pepper, Take it, who was battling Dougie Fresh when they first came out. Take it over to Queen Latifah, MC Light. These are hip hop women, okay? Take it over to them. Now, women are also the executives. Sylvia Robinson, legendary woman, her soul rest in peace. She was the founder and president, CEO, of Sugar Hill Records. The first rap records to come out in a major way putting aside the fat back bands King Tim the Third, which is true scholarship. But coming over to 
Sugar Hill Records. That was ran by a black woman. Grandmaster Flash, Treacherous Three, Furious Five, Sequence, all of a black woman. See the vision and put it out. I say all this to say, what causes the movement of hip hop? First, Africa Bambada caused it. But go further back, Malcolm X caused it. Go further forward, Cool Herc caused it. No, he didn't. Cindy caused it. Oh. Go even further, my mother caused it. And every single mother that raised a single boy to a man. This is also hip hop. Ask most hip hoppers, the early hip hoppers from 81 to 91, the golden age of hip hop, 90% of us raised by women. 90% raised by single women. Dad was not around. Hip hop is feminine in a lot of ways. Hip hop exalts the woman in a lot of ways. Mainstream says, oh, hip hop is misogynist toward women. Hip hop degrades women. Stupid. What an idiotic argument. Those people who say that are not even part of hip hop. Because if you was part of hip hop, you know that it was Queen Latifah who put out, I need a gangster bitch. A gangster bitch, I need a gangster bitch. Her artist was called Apache. He actually put the record out. But Latifah was the woman, the executive behind the record. Then Latifah puts out, who you calling a bitch? You and I, T Y, your biggest record in hip hop. This is one woman. Anybody who looks at hip hop would look at Mary J. Blige and Method Man. Method Man, the record, all I, you're all I need to get by. Shorty, I'm there for you anytime you need. For real, it's me and your world. Nothing makes a man feel better. Oh, I can't get his, record, his, his lyrics together. But when you listen to the lyrics of Method Man, and how he adores Mary J. Blige. He's just like, right, he's just like, oh, you're my world, you're my everything, you're everything. How is that misogynist? At the end of the record, he says to Mary, you my nigga. Does Mary go, why are you calling me a nigga? No, Mary know exactly what he's talking about. She's like, word, they did the video together. She even went and did another record with Ghostface, which was even bigger than that one. This is real hip hop, real hip hop. Not sociologists, not professors. They don't even know their own subject. How you gonna look at hip hop? They don't even know their own subject. They don't even know what sociology is. So to put a, so to put a, put a period on it real quick, there's a little period here. The movement of hip hop, peace, love, unity, having fun. It comes out of the civil rights movement, the continuation of that struggle to get free. And what is free? Not just free to run around and do stupid stuff, but free to be a man, free to be a woman, free to raise a family. Right now, hip hop is in family mode right now. All of hip hop is in family mode right now. All of us, we got our kids with us. We're putting our kids on TV. Will Smith just put his son up. Snoop just spoke the blunt with his son. <laughs> actually, he, um, he, <laughs> he actually, no, what I want to say is that his daughter, he just did a record with his daughter called No Guns Allowed. Um, just did a reggae record, Snoop Lion, did a record with uh, his daughter and Drake. Big up to Drake, big up to Snoop and his daughter. Uh, for doing that record, No Guns Allowed, and they, they did a reggae record on that. That's Snoop. That's 187 on an undercover cop, yeah, and you don't. That's him, okay? That's him, all right? Now he's my daughter, and no guns in school. Why? Because I'm a father, really. And we knew that. When Snoop said 187, on, we knew who he was then. Me and Snoop have been friends for years. Years. Does he look at me and say, oh, Chris is just preaching too much? Do I look at him and, oh, he's gangster gang? No! Snoop is probably more intelligent than I am. Think about this. Everybody who's everybody who is for the cause doesn't run around with dreadlocks and red, black, and green on. 